This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So Leibowitz is back in the news. He has asked a judge in the Southern District of New York in the Mick Rock versus Enfant Richet de Prime et al. Uh, he has asked the judge to reconsider the court's award of attorney's fees and sanctions. We'll see what the court granted in just a moment, and then we'll see why Leibowitz's motion to reconsider his sanctions is denied. On April 11th, 2017, plaintiff brought this action against defendants for violations of the Copyright Act. Plaintiff alleged that he was the creator and rightful owner of a photograph that was used on articles of clothing and other merchandise without license. However, plaintiff produced no evidence that the photograph was registered with the Copyright Office. The only registration referenced by plaintiff was for the work Mick Rock Exposed, known as the 990 registration because it ends in 990. A book which included the photograph. However, the 990 registration itself excluded the photograph. Thus, plaintiff's copyright claim was missing an essential element, registration of the allegedly infringing material. Now, if you have watched our videos on copyright registration, which is the Fourth Estate Public Benefit Corporation case from last year, I think it was last March, and we'll put it in a bubble up there someplace you need to register your copyright before you file a lawsuit. But that decision was just made in 2019 in March or beginning of April. And this case we just saw was filed April 11th, 2017. So there was no requirement to register the copyright before filing the lawsuit. So let's see how the court deals with that. Nevertheless, plaintiff brought his claim and continued to litigate even after he had been alerted by defendants that the photograph was not registered. Plaintiff stonewalled discovery, misled the court, made meritless arguments to support his claim. Since the photograph was unregistered, the court granted defendants motion for summary judgment and dismissed plaintiff's claim without prejudice. So without prejudice, great. That means that he can register the photograph and bring the claims again. Defendant then filed a motion for attorney's fees, costs, and sanctions. On January 29th, 2020, the court granted defendants $100,000 in attorney's fees and sanctioned plaintiff's counsel, Richard Leibowitz, and his law firm for $10,000 of those dollars. Plaintiff filed the instant motion for reconsideration. So what is a motion for reconsideration? It's a cheap appeal. You, have, you ask the same judge. I mean, instead of going to the appeals court and asking a different set of judges in a different court to reconsider, you're asking this judge to reconsider their own decision. Hence, it's reconsideration and not appeal. That's really the only distinction there. But you're asking the judge to reconsider their own decision. Defendants filed their opposition February 26th. Plaintiff replied, and defendants filed a sir reply. Okay, so standard of review. A motion for reconsideration is an extraordinary remedy to be employed sparingly in the interests of finality and conservation of scarce judicial resources. A court will grant such a motion only where the party seeking reconsideration identifies an intervening change of controlling law, new evidence, or the need to correct a clear error or to prevent a manifest injustice. Um, I can give you an example of one time that I had to file a motion for reconsideration, and this will make it a lot clearer. We're not talking about some fine point of law where, you know, the judge just disagreed with your interpretation of law. Of course, motions for reconsideration get filed instead of appeals in all sorts of cases, including ones where there was just a disagreement over an interpretation of law and there is really no grounds for appeal. But then there are ones like my case where my clients and my, the parties, including my clients, had reached an agreement. The parties reach an agreement and the agreement says party A shall pay party B two times the amount listed on schedule A. And the judge goes and enters the order. Great, we have an agreement of the parties. The party A will pay to party B one time the amount of the thing on schedule A. 
of course there's a mistake there. It's in plain English. It's in writing. It's in my clients have agreed to two times the amount, but the judge entered an order that said one times the amount. That was a really easy one. We filed a motion for reconsideration. Literally the next day, we got the corrected order. No problem. So is this that kind of case, which is a clear cut case where the judge has made a bad decision and it needs to be corrected? No, it is not simply an opportunity for the moving party to present the case again under new theories or otherwise take a second bite at the apple. The decision to grant or deny a motion for reconsideration is committed to the sound discretion of the district court, but in exercising that discretion, the court must be mindful that a motion for reconsideration is not favored and is properly granted only upon a showing of exceptional circumstances. Plaintiff presents three reasons why the court should reconsider its award of attorney's fees and sanctions. One, dismissal of an infringement claim without prejudice cannot accord a defendant with prevailing party status. So that's 17 U.S.C. 505, the prevailing party may get their attorney's fees awarded in the discretion of the court. Two, there is no clear evidence of bad faith to support sanctions against plaintiff's counsel. I'll wait for you to stop laughing. Three, a new registration for the photograph was issued by the Copyright Office and thus defendant can still be held liable for copyright infringement. Good. The first two arguments were previously raised by plaintiff and rejected by this court. The third argument is new. It is well established that a motion for reconsideration is not an opportunity to relitigate issues or advance new arguments. This alone is reason to reject plaintiff's motion for reconsideration. And you can just hear it in the judge like this, this you can it's it's it drips from the judge's speech. Nevertheless, for the reasons set forth below, plaintiff's argument also fails on the merits. Let's see what the judge had to say. In a footnote in their reply memorandum, defendants request an additional 25 grand in fees and costs incurred in responding to plaintiff's motion for reconsideration. The question of whether to award attorneys fees and costs is left to the sound discretion of the court. Moreover, the fee applicant bears the burden of establishing entitlement to an award. The court finds that it is not appropriate to award additional attorneys fees and costs associated with the motion for reconsideration. So they're only getting fees and costs associated with the case and not the motion for reconsideration. Plaintiff first argues that the court erred in finding that defendants were the prevailing party for purposes of the Copyright Act because the court dismissed plaintiff's case without prejudice. The touchstone of the prevailing party inquiry must be the material alteration of the legal relationship of the parties. This court held that the 990 registration did not register the photograph and thus the plaintiff failed to allege an essential element of their copyright claim. This undermined the legal foundation of, cop of plaintiff's claim and prevented him from bringing the same claim in any federal court. Plaintiff was free to apply for a new registration for the photograph and then bring a new suit for copyright infringement based on the new registration. Nevertheless, the fact that plaintiff could take these steps to change the legal registration of the photograph and then bring a copyright claim does not affect the fact that the court's summary judgment order materially altered the legal relationship between the parties. Moreover, the Supreme Court has made clear that a defendant need not obtain a favorable judgment on the merits in order to be a prevailing party. Plaintiff cites five cases in his moving brief that purport to hold prevailing party status cannot be accorded where a dismissal is obtained without prejudice. Four of these cases are from outside of this circuit, and all but one of these cases involves voluntarily dismissal, voluntarily or voluntary dismissal of the claims. It is well established that to be considered a prevailing party, a plaintiff must achieve a judicially sanctioned material alteration in the legal relationship between the parties. A voluntary dismissal lacks the judicial imprimatur necessary to confer the status of a prevailing party. Accordingly, the cases plaintiff cites are different in kind from this case because here the court dismissed plaintiff's claim after discovery and extensive summary judgment briefing from the parties and plaintiff was not free to simply refile his claim. 
Next, Mr. Leibowitz argues that there is no evidence to support a finding of bad faith. Specifically, Leibowitz argues that his reliance on the 990 registration, though perhaps poor legal judgment, was not objectively unreasonable, and that the court's award of sanctions has likely been persuaded by other district courts which have sanctioned Mr. Leibowitz in the past. This is incorrect. Mr. Leibowitz not only advanced objectively unreasonable and frivolous arguments, but the totality of his conduct in this case demonstrated bad faith. This included failing to investigate the evidentiary basis for the complaint, stonewalling discovery, failing to comply with the magistrate judge's orders, misleading the court, and making meritless arguments. Mr. Leibowitz's conduct in this case alone, not his conduct in other cases in this district, warrants sanctions. And he does not rebut or refute any of these bases for sanctions in his motion for reconsideration. Finally, plaintiff argues that defendants cannot be deemed the prevailing party because the Copyright Office recently issued a copyright registration for the photograph, and because plaintiff filed a new action for copyright infringement against defendant Enfant Richet Duprime. In light of these developments, plaintiff requests that the court reopen this matter or certify a related action. Plaintiff applied for registration of the photograph on, follow these numbers, April 29th, 2019, and it was recently granted with an effective date of May 1st, 2019. Okay, so I must have misread that the first time I saw. I thought that he that he received the registration in only two days. It looks like he received the registration two days later effectively, but a year later. <laughs> so it took like nine months or six months or something for the, uh, the copyright registration to go through. That's what that means. Based on the registration, plaintiff filed a complaint for copyright infringement in the Central District of California, March 5th, 2020. Plaintiff argues that because a registration was eventually issued for the photograph, defendants cannot be considered the prevailing party. This argument is both too little and too late. Plaintiff applied for this copyright on April 29, 2019, more than two years after commencing the action, and after discovery was complete, and after the court issued a final judgment, and the case was terminated. Plaintiff cites no cases for the proposition that registering a photograph after this significant delay at the end of litigation can retroactively remove defendant's prevailing party status. Plaintiff litigated the entirety of this case without holding a valid registration to the photograph. Obtaining a registration for the photograph after the court entered final judgment does not strip defendants of their prevailing party status. Plaintiff alternatively requests that the court reopen this action in light of the new registration issued for the photograph. Plaintiff relies on Judge Forrest's order in Rudkowski v. Fox News Network. In Rudkowski, defendant filed a motion to dismiss in response to plaintiff's complaint instead of filing an answer. As of a matter of right, plaintiff had 21 days after service of defendant's motion to dismiss to amend its pleading. It is well established that courts in the circuit have discretion to allow a plaintiff to amend their complaint if they obtain registration after the suit's initiation. Accordingly, plaintiff informed the court in Rudkowski that plaintiff expects to have received an expedited registration for the video at issue within the 21 days the plaintiff had to amend the complaint. Judge Forrest then dismissed the case without prejudice, but noted that plaintiff may refile the action if and when a registration is obtained. Rudkowski differs in two significant ways. First, in Rudkowski, plaintiff filed the motion to reopen the case within 21 days of being served with a motion to dismiss. In this case, plaintiff asked the court to reopen the case on March 4th, 2020, nearly three years after the complaint was filed and after the court issued a final judgment in the case. Second, in Rudkowski, Plaintiff applied for the copyright registration before initiating the action. In this case, plaintiff did not apply for the registration until nearly two years after initiating the action. Plaintiff cites no authority for reopening the case after it has already been terminated and after the court declines to reopen the case. Plaintiff has failed to identify a change in controlling law, a new law, or a need to correct a clear error or prevent manifest injustice. Thus, after careful consideration, plaintiff's motion for reconsideration is hereby denied. So ordered, Andrew L. Carter, United States District Judge for the Southern District of New York. So... Leibowitz 
has to pay the 10,000 himself. His client has to pay the other ninety thousand and eight dollars or something. So, yeah, I just don't recommend hiring Leibowitz. <laughs> like you as a photographer plaintiff are taking a risk by hiring Leibowitz because, look, he might not catch a fatal error to your case, which might cost you a lot of money. And even if he goes straight for maximum statutory damages in the new case, he's not getting a hundred thousand dollars out of that, I don't think. So when it comes to the plaintiff paying the defendant's costs, Leibowitz is usually he's usually hired on contingency, so you don't pay for Leibowitz unless he wins. Um, does that mean that you also don't pay if he loses? I don't actually know what Leibowitz's arrangement with his clients is. Okay, I'm going off of his website, which has a oh. thing that says you don't pay if unless you win. If he's uh, tra really charging contingency, um, then yeah, you probably don't owe him anything when he loses your case, but you're still on the hook as the plaintiff. Like the court doesn't, oh, well, you don't owe the $100,000 because, oh, well, you made a different arrangement with your attorney than we thought you did. No, no nothing to do with it. You still owe the $100,000 and Leibowitz owes 10 of it. And the arrangement of who owes what, besides what the court said, the 110 and the 90 and the 10, um, besides that, like that's between you and Leibowitz and the court doesn't, doesn't, isn't going to care that you made a deal with Leibowitz. You owe the money. See, that would be very, very scary for me as a yeah. potential client that yeah. sure, if if he loses, I don't have to pay him, but I could have to pay 100000 to yeah. the defendant. That's a Why, big risk. When ev anybody, because, you know, people have short memories, so nobody ever remembers that we haven't, that Lawful Masses has threatened to sue people like three times and we never did. Um, there's a reason why we never did. I made the calculations in my head, like, is the risk worth it? Lawsuits are not immune from risk. If I do something wrong as a plaintiff in the lawsuit, or if something was different than I understood it, and I didn't, I don't catch it in time, I could be on the hook for somebody else's attorney's fees. So maybe I don't want to sue NBC Universal, or maybe I don't want to sue Univision, or maybe I don't want to sue um, uh, World Star Hip Hop. Not because they don't deserve to be sued, but because the uh, violation was so minor that do I really want to take massive risks based on a small violation, uh, a, a small violation that I was able to correct rel relatively simple in my case. So sure, if something was ongoing, I would definitely protect myself. But yeah, let us know what you think of uh, Leibowitz being in the news yet again, this time asking for the judge to reconsider what was pretty obviously a fair order against him. But I guess you got to try. When it's $100,000, you got to try. Because I'm sure Leibowitz is on some level on the hook for that $100,000. Even if his client made the mistake, I, I think it's on the attorney for not catching a copyright registration mistake. That seems to me to be well within a lawyer's rules of professional conduct for doing their due diligence before signing a paper. Yes, I've just combined rule 11 and the rules of professional conduct, but similar reasons. Let us know what you think in the comments below. What do you think of Richard Leibowitz? Should he have been granted his motion for reconsideration? <laughs> Can't say it with a straight face. I think he's a national treasure at this point. Like they should make a hall of fame. Like, you know how we have a rock and roll hall of fame. We have a baseball hall of fame. We put the best examples of the best baseball players, the best musicians, the best performers. We give them a hall of heroes. Can't we have like a hall of shame and like all of the worst people that that guy who doubled the price of his pharmaceuticals uh, that that uh, the young guy I forget his name Martin Shkreli. Thank you, Martin Shkreli can go in in there. Um, you know, Derek Chauvin can go in there, and Richard Leibowitz should go into the Hall of Shame. Of these are the worst Americans. We are we are ashamed. These people are an example of what not to do. Maybe we should La the lawful masses Hall of Shame. We could call it awful asses. How about that? Um, why don't we, yeah, why don't we start that? When, when Lawful Masses goes nonprofit, we're going to start our own special fund to raise money for a physical museum, a hall of shame. And we're going to have tributes to the worst Americans of all time.
the lawful masses hall of shame the awful asses hall of shame so that is our show thank you for joining me everyone i'm leonard french your favorite copyright attorney and this is lawful masses your favorite community supported legal news and education channel community supported means we need your financial support in order to keep this effort going and keep making you new videos on modern or, or contemporary legal news and education now normally we start our crawls at our, our supporters lists and everything on the second of the month and we're recording this on the 31st of may so because of the timing there's only going to be one video on the first that's released with the may crawl and then the june crawl will start on june 2nd thank you to the following may supporters at the 50 dollars plus level joe tyson west elge nicely done defense video remonetized john Steele, gavin barnard evie kyle mudrock spirit bear yonda gray michael pierce daniel perez blackleaf benjamin hightoff steven Ada, cute grills in your area Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Josh Baker, Gregory, Rudolph Becherer Jr. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel next to me. Uh, all of you will appear on the crawls in front of me and in the video in the description of the videos that drop. I'm Leonard French. I love you all. I honestly can't believe do you remember the end of My Cousin Vinny when uh, Marissa Tomei turns to, to Joe Pesci and says, what a nightmare at the end of everything you do, after it's winning every court case for your entire career, you have to turn to somebody and you have to say, thank you. You know what? Thank you. You guys are wonderful. This is an amazing community and I'm so happy to be a part of it. I'm Leonard French. I love you all. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Thank you. Huh. <laughs>